Hey everyone, my name is Nat. Welcome to my backyard and welcome back to the series I'm doing on building this big bandsaw mill. I have April Wilkerson here. Hello. All the way from Texas today. Well, she's here for a few days and she's gonna give me a hand today. We're gonna work on the idle side to get the mount here on the beam for the idle wheel. And uh, let's get started. This will mount up underneath here and we're going to mount it to a box that I'll be able to slide on this beam so you can tension the blade by moving the wheel in or out. So to create the box, April went ahead and cut some lengths of half inch steel plate, six inches wide. We're going to use that to actually frame out the box. April already put a bevel on here, so we're also ready to go for the welding. So all we have to do now is clamp these things to the beam and get them welded up. Now I don't want to put them right up against the beam because I need some tolerance there for paint as well as some tolerance there so I can slide back and forth. So for that, I'm going to use these index cards and I've gone with four index cards for the offset for the top and the sides. So that should give me two cards for the paint and a little bit of tolerance on both sides, or on all four sides of the beam. Let's do three. I just do better with the direction. Here, here, and here or something. It doesn't really matter because I'll come back and do some, some stitches later. What do you do with your left hand? I, use, I prop the rod. Oh, so you can touch this? Yeah, you can touch it. How do I start it? You have to kind of come in quickly, just kind of hit it on the surface. This is important information, Matt. This is the important part, yes. <laughs> so I scratch the surface. Yeah, basically you'll, you'll scratch, so as you're coming down, you're trying to get it to arc. Yeah. And once the arc forms, it'll stay, and then you can kind of keep it uh, pretty close to the surface. Did it work? Yeah, but I think it, it's not good. It's yeah, just, a little, it's too little, small? A little more, yeah. Wow, you're like an expert. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't start that easily the first time I did it. I got stuck like 600 times. Heavy. It's important to hit the metal and then come away really quickly, or when you just hit the metal, you just have to be prepared. Uh, it for depends it. on on these when they're ready started. Mm -hmm. They're a lot easier to get the arc going. Yeah, because you can just literally just come in and relatively close and start. Okay. On the new ones, they're harder to start, so you kind of actually have to scratch the surface a little bit oh, gotcha. and get the arc going. Thanks. Do you, you have it? I have the piece okay. of metal. All right, all right. Okay, how are we gonna do this? There, look at that. Nice. Man. Yeah, you gotta get up in there more. That looks bad. But that's fine. There's, just, there's so much weld surface here. So what, I just gotta go slower? Yeah, a little more methodical, but that's pretty good. I mean, it's better than my first ones. Oh, wow. All right. That is <laughs> That one already hit this one. So see how it goes in. How do I prevent that? Just pause. When you be pause. Right when you're about to be done, just yeah. pause in that spot for like a little extra longer yeah. and then come off. And pull straight like this I, way. I usually come back over the over the puddle. Oh, okay. So you pause, come back, and then out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You need help? I'm just trying to like feel for like where the hot spot is. Yeah. Since you have two hands, where is it? Uh, here it is. Yeah, got it. Oh, okay. There you go. I just hit that one, yes. Okay, so I'm not going to touch that. And then or I did that this. front one right before it. So we're not touching that. Hopefully, I can feel the heat like on my face. Yeah. Yeah, my hands are really warm. <laughs> So now we have the idle box essentially. This will slide back and forth. The idle wheel will be down here. So to tension the blade, this will slide out and apply pressure to the blade. Um, I'll have to clean up these little 
I don't know, ears or something, whatever you want to call them. But April did an amazing job welding this thing up. Um, I was thinking like I would just show her a couple of beads <laughs> and then like she'd do a couple and then it'd be up to me to finish it. But I took over. You went a little crazy on the on the welding. I get I get attached. No, it was really fun. Uh, my first time stick welding, so I wanted to practice on your <laughs> stuff and not mine. <laughs> well, definitely good practice. This is probably not going to come apart now. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, so that was fun. April's going to take off and uh, I'll keep going on the rest of this thing. Good luck with it. Thanks. So before I get into continuing with this, I just want to take a moment to explain kind of what I have in mind. So this is the idle shaft assembly and the idea here is for this to be mounted on the underside of the beam so you have a lot more depth of cut than if you had mounted it on top. But for the layout purposes and gravity's sake, I'm going to lay it out based on the top side so it's easier to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a, another piece of half inch steel and I guess in retrospect I could have made part of this box out of a one inch thick piece of steel and not had to add this but you know that's how it goes. <laughs> so I'm going to fit this and weld this to here and then the idle assembly will get bolted on top of here. So I'll have one inch thick of material there that I can tap uh, for a bolt. So in order to actually track the wheel, I need to be able to move this shaft side to side, up and down, and in and out. In and out's pretty easy. It's got these slotted holes that I can use so the bolt will be undersized and down in there. And being undersized, that allows it to pivot side to side a little bit. To control the pivot side to side, I'm going to weld a block with, some, with a hole that's tapped for a bolt, and this bolt will just push on the corners, I'll have one each of the four corners, and that'll get my tilt in and out. Now, to get it to come up and down, I'm gonna do that pretty low tech, I guess. I'm just gonna be shimming the front of the back to get that angle correct. I also mentioned this plate is pretty big, it extends pretty far back here. Again, this is just a piece that I pulled out of the scrap pile at the steel yard, so I can probably cut this down later. So to start fitting up this box to the plate, I'm going to go over the surface and knock off all the splatter BBs. Then I'll clean up the welds a little bit to make fitting the plate on that joint line a little bit easier. And then I'll bevel all the edges on the box, which are going to receive the welds. And that should be good to go for that point. Alright, so now I'm going to put the plate into the jaws and I'll work on fitting this to the box. That's fitting pretty well. I think I closed this gap up a little bit too much, so when I set this thing up, I'll put a little bit of a spacer in there so at least I have somewhere for the weld to go down in there. Hey, the nice thing about this is I can leave the welder in the shop. So now I want to mark the hole locations so I can get those drilled. And I don't have a center punch this big. I think this is a 5 8 inch hole. So what I did here is I grabbed a couple pieces of wood to act as shims. And I grabbed a center punch which is roughly the same size as the distance between the shims here. And I'll use that to actually keep the center punch centered in the hole in this direction. There's a lot of adjustability in this direction so I'm less worried about that being totally in the center. So I'm just going to eyeball the location this way. See if that worked. Yep, I got a divot there. And there are my hole locations.
So before I called it a night yesterday, I drilled and tapped these holes in this bar stock and now I can just cut this off and then clean them up a little bit, give them a little bit of shape and then weld them to the plate for my adjustment bolts. So now it's really starting to look like a sawmill. <laughs> uh, obviously, there is no uh, tensioning device on here yet. Uh, I still need to get the drive side on there so I can get a blade on here so I know exactly where this wheel needs to end up before I do my tensioning mechanism. But I thought I'd share a little bit about the whole tensioning mechanism methodology, I guess. So in my online research, there's kind of like two schools of thought I've, I've found. There's either the what I'll call a static tensioner and a dynamic tensioner. A static tensioner applies force or basically moves this to a fixed spot and stays there. There's no give at all. And the other way to do it is the tensioning mechanism just applies force to this, but the way that the force is applied is a little bit of give there to allow there to be some movement back and forth throughout the cut. Idea behind having a little bit of play in there, it kind of gives the blade a little bit more uh, leeway to uh, flex or move through the cut if something happens, if there's, um, you know, whatever, whatever might happen there. And if the blade stretches as you use it, the tensioning mechanisms can still apply some force to that blade. With the static tensioner, if the blade actually stretches and gets longer, the tension on the blade is going to go down because this thing only doesn't go past a certain point. The static tensioners, you should see those as just a screw mechanism that pulls this thing out or a hydraulic ram which just pushes against here and pushes it forward. Um, the other way, the uh, dynamic ones, you'll have ones that have a spring in there. So something compressing a spring and the spring is what is actually pushing on the whole um, box assembly here. Or you could also do like an airbag or an air cylinder, something that has a little bit of give. Now for me, what I'm going to be doing here, since I'm not doing a whole lot of sawing, I'm going to do a hydraulic ram. But what I'm going to do with that whole tensioning mechanism is I'm going to have a pressure gauge on the ram so I know that if the pressure comes down on the gauge, I can see that as I'm sawing and I can bring the pressure back up and move this thing out further, putting more tension on the blade. I'm considering maybe in the future doing something with a spring just to get a little more of a dynamic thing going, but at least for the time being, I think doing a really simple hydraulic tensioner is going to be the way to go 
especially for me. That's about it for this one. This is pretty exciting. Personally, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, there's only like, what, four more like major things to go before this thing is actually cutting. I need to make the drive side. I need to mount the motor. I need to make the, um, the raised lower mechanism and I need some way to clamp logs down to the bed. And then it's time to power this thing up. Um, I think those are pretty small, kind of like this was. So I think that's gonna kind of come together pretty quickly here in the next few weeks, at least I'm hoping. So we should see a lot more progress here very, very soon. <laughs> so thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the sawmill build or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.